Welcome back, neighborinos. Welcome back to another hot episode of a very special podcast. This is the podcast in which you talk about all your favorite TV series from yesteryear and then discuss it over a can of kombucha. I'm your boy, Patrick M. Dunn, and I'm joined here, as always, by my constant, Cat Halstead, the author. Welcome back, girl. Welcome back. Oh, I would be your constant. Uh, yeah, I know how to find you. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Very easily. In all honesty, let's be real. It would be each other. If it's not us, it's Steven. Well, if if I happened to be back in the 90s, I would just hop on an AOL and look for you. <laughs> if it was the 2000s, I'd go to Twitter. So very easy to find you. Yeah. Very easy to find you. I don't might not know your phone number, but <laughs> I'll find you somehow. You'll find me somehow. <laughs> well, welcome back to the third installment of the... Holly Jolly Jamboree? Yes, the Holly Jolly Jamboree. The most festive time of the year. Yeah. Everything's crazy. Everything's Christmassy. Everything's creepy because we're going to um, a place we haven't been to in a while tonight. Am I right? But we are so excited to go to this place. Oh my God. Yes, we are so excited. So uh, what are we doing? What classic TV series are we uh, sliding into for the second time ever? We are sliding into one of our all-time favorite shows. That is not a sitcom. We are sliding into Lost. Yes. Boom, boom. We'll put the little like Lost sound effect right there. Maybe the smoke monster noise. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my god. And not only are we doing Lost, we're doing what is singly, I would say arguably, the single most greatest episode of the show ever, right? Yes, it is. Um, there are lists of like the top 10 episodes of Lost. This is consistently the number one episode. Occasionally, somebody might throw in through the looking glass. And, and I can understand that. I, I you know, yeah, I, I can understand that. But this episode is just so amazing. I liked watching like just dropping in to the middle of the series the way we did because we haven't been like rewatching it or anything. And just watching this one hour was just fun. Yeah, it was very enjoyable. And it also made yeah. me realize this is like the peak of the show. It doesn't get any better than this. It just kind of is like a slow decline, me thinks. Sort of. I, I, sort of. I, I can see why you say that. But it, it's an episode that gives a lot of answers in a way, but still a lot of questions. Uh, sort of, sort of. You know. Yeah, this, I feel like this is also the first episode that's like, truly full-blown sci-fi elements as well. I think this is where you can no longer argue that this show is not a sci-fi show. Like, if you try to argue it after you've seen The Constant, you are just ridiculous and you need, just need to go away. Just shoot. They've always kind of peppered in elements of, like, sci-fi stuff. Like, you always saw the smoke monster. Maybe you were, like, wondering what the fuck a, um, I don't know, a polar bear was doing in, like, a, I don't know, some tropical landscape but this is and i think they even kind of like teased they made jokes or insinuated um stuff about time travel before but i think this is the first time we like jump right into it yeah. like the first time we physically see it on screen because let's be real as we know i am not a big sci-fi person i don't really like there's really only two sci-fi shows that i have watched and enjoyed and it is lost and the 4400 and the remake on the CW was trash. Is that still on? Is that still a thing? I don't even know, to be honest with you. I have no clue. I watched the pilot and I was like, this is awful. I am insulted as somebody who watched the original series. This is bad. I'm out. Is it all like hot, sexy, young 20-somethings running around? Uh, not exactly. Oh, they got, they got some olds in there? It, it, I just, I don't know. It just felt like it was trying to be too woke. Is it brought to us by the same people who did the OG, or is this like a whole new crew like working on it? I don't think so. I think it's like other people. Okay, I don't know. I, I like part of me is like, oh, like exciting. There's a new 4400 series coming up, and then the other part of me is like, really? Like this is the well we have to go down? Like this uh, out of I don't know. There's like 40 hundred. 4,400 other things they could have done before they did the 4,400 again. Like, and there were definitely, like, concepts they were trying to take from the original series, but the way they were trying to weave that in just felt weird. Like, I was just like, I don't, th this doesn't 
nope, we're out. Honestly, I remember hearing that it was coming out, but it seemed like it was like years ago, and <laughs> I just didn't even know it ever came out, to be honest with you. Like, I literally forgot all about it, and then, like, I saw a tweet, like, the day the pilot aired. And so I, like, went on one of the apps or whatever the next day and was like, I'll check it out. And then I was like, oh, this is bad. Uh, I didn't really have high hopes for it because I have seen the Charmed redo. Not that good. I get that. I will admit, I did like the new Roswell, though. Not not gonna lie. I only watched, like, the first few episodes, but I was into it. I was like, I dug it. I mean, I was never into Roswell. What? Like, never. What? Yeah. Well. I, I couldn't even tell you what night that, that aired. That's, like, how not into it I was. I feel like it was on after, like, Dawson's Creek. No. <laughs> Maybe Buffy. Maybe it was on, like, after Buffy. Maybe. I don't know. I just. Who knows? Like, I, the only episodes of Roswell I have seen are, like, final season episodes when they would like rerun on the sci-fi channel okay like before i would watch like episodes of like dark shadows or something so like the first season of roswell it was it was the premise was like what would happen if dawson's creek had aliens and it was like super soapy and like kind of about like the coming of age of these characters and then i guess it wasn't doing too hot so then like the second and third season like leaned a lot more into the sci-fi elements of the show. Uh-huh. And it kind of lost its lust, luster. But I think the third season, it had gone over to UPN. And I think at some point they knew it was, like, going off the air. So they just kind of, like, let them do whatever the fuck they want. And I think they kind of, like, went back to a, um back to the basics for, like, the final stretch of episodes, from what I remember. But, I don't know, it's been a while since I've watched it. But I just remember being, like upset when it got canceled like i was like like vividly upset about it. I, I think i wrote a letter to like upn oh my gosh wow and then i forgot about it and then just like never went back and revisited it ever <laughs> all y'all out there probably asking what the fuck does lost have to do with christmas yes this episode takes place on christmas eve we learn haphazardly but we'll get in there we'll get in there in a minute um so do you want to do um like a quick like recap of where we are on lost or do you just want to like jump into uh this this hot night of television let's jump into this hot night of television okay because i'm kind of curious it's uh well it's like the late early 2000s so we kind of have like a lot of options and this is like that era when like there's too much tv so i'm gonna kind of just like pepper in like the the big network okay yeah i'm not gonna go to cable yeah i'm not gonna dip into cable like unless something catches my eye that that sounds fine to me All right. I mean, this is also the same year we had the writer's strike, right? Uh, I believe so. I think so, yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll allow that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, because I think um, the lost season started later because of it, right? Yeah, I think it got pushed back so that there wasn't, like, a major hiatus between episodes or something because of the strike. and. Yeah, there was, like, an 18-month gap between seasons, between, like, season three and four or some oh, shit like that. It was something wild. So we're, what, see, this is season four, episode five of Lost, I believe, right? Am I doing the math right? Something like that, yes. All right, so this episode aired in February, February 28th, 2008. It was a Thursday night, and uh, you want to start off with our boys at ABC, the Alphabet, see what they're up to? Yeah, what's happening on the Alphabet Network? All right, at eight o'clock, uh, we actually get a repeat of Lost. They're playing the previous week's episode. Okay. Lead it up into the constant. I think they did that a lot because um, DVRs were just starting to become a thing, really. Oh, yeah. I didn't have a DVR. The TV I had at the time was one of those little teeny tiny TVs with the built-in VCR, but you couldn't program it to record anything. It was like right when streaming was starting. Yeah, I think there were like a few options. I think like you could do like ABC.com, but you were like... Yes. Yeah. Oh, I totally 100% would do ABC.com to watch episodes of Lost because I would work Thursday nights. You were stuck to your computer, though. Like, it didn't hop on over to your TV. Like, it wasn't like you had, like, a Roku box or something. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, it probably was out there, but yeah. not common and real hard to do. And I just remember um, ABC.com was it was super annoying to watch TV shows on there. I just remember that for some reason. I mean, it was not the greatest. It's still not the greatest. I don't think you could, like, expand the screen, right? I always just felt like there was, like, always stuff on the side that was... Yeah, like, I just remember there always seemed to be, like, s some kind of issue. Yeah. You know? know? Like, you didn't have the updated browser or something. Or, like, the volume sucked. <laughs> yeah, like, I just remember lots of issues. Uh, Actually, I remember 2008. Um, I, I remember around this time, I actually used to watch 
TV shows on like a tiny iPod screen. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you know what? Because um, this is when I would actually download a lot of stuff. One of the times I would download a lot of stuff onto iTunes. Yeah, you'd pay like five bucks. You'd watch the um, the file on um, on like your either your iTunes player or on your iPod screen. It would take you like four hours to download the file if you didn't have like a great Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. Uh, great test. Great test. All right. So ABC led in led into an episode of Lost with Lost. And then following Lost was a show that I actually I actually used to watch this and it was OK. I enjoyed it. Um, I haven't thought about it since I just looked at this list two minutes ago. What was it? Uh, remember a little sh- show called Eli Stone? I OK. I remember Eli Stone. I remember watching like the first few episodes and then I dropped it and I don't remember why. He was like a lawyer and he was like going crazy. Like he was having these like visual hallucinations and like George Michael would show up sometimes. <laughs> Oh, George Michael, I miss you. It's very, like, um, it kind of always reminded me of, like, Ally McBeal in a way. I, I can see that. Yeah, I, I got vibes from it. Um, It was um Johnny Lee Miller, right? He was the, the lead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he could, like, see the future. Wasn't that it? Like, that was his, like, gimmick? Something like that, but nobody believed him. And, like, what he saw was just a little weird. Yeah, he, like, it was just always these, like, wacky visuals. Um. Victor Garber was in it, Natasha Hensridge, uh, Matt Letcher. Those are the big names. Yeah, it was on for one season. I think the writer's strike killed it. I think it was one of those. um... Yeah, I think it's probably one of those shows that just did not have the ability to survive the strike. Which is pretty bad considering there are a lot of shows that if the strike had not happened, they would not have survived. Like The Big Bang Theory. Might have been a cheaper show to make, so maybe they just went with like the cheaper shows to produce over the um, big budget High concept shows. Well, because they didn't do a pilot season that year. There was a very... Sh- if they did do a pilot season, it was very short. So they didn't have, like, the possibilities to replace certain things. So they're like, ah, eh, we'll just give it another season. Oh, yeah, because, like, there was a bunch of shitty shows that came back, and then they were, like, quickly canceled, like, four episodes in, second season. Yeah. You want to go to the CBS? Want to see what the Tiffany Network's uh, spewing out tonight? Yeah, what's, Tif- what's CBS got for us on a Thursday night? Any guesses? In 2008. Any any hot guesses? Um, I want to say... I actually have no clue. Kind of a big night. It's actually like a really like banner night for them. Uh, things kick off at 8 o'clock with Survivor. Okay. Uh, then we slide into CSI. Okay. Then we slide into uh, Without a Trace. Okay, okay. I kind of see it. These were like big hits for them, right? Yeah. I don't think like Without a Trace was like a huge, huge hit, but it got like a few seasons in, right? Like four or five maybe? But yeah, like I... Watched Without a Trace once in a while. Like It was one I would catch every so often. Yeah, I had a gal pal Poppy Montgomery finding people that vanished without a trace. Yeah, like I think it was a moderate hit for the network. You know, CBS, they have like five dozen procedurals, so. Yeah, it, it probably did okay. It probably did better than like The Mentalist. So they, they let it stick around for a few years. All right, um, you want to move over to Fox? Want to see what Fox is up to? Yeah, what's on Fox? All right, any guesses before we go? Come on, think about this. I have no, like, I honestly have no idea. All right, it's kind of a shitty night at Fox. Um, We get American Idol. Okay. Full hour. Probably a live show. Mm-hmm. Probably like a vote off or something. And then Don't Forget the Lyrics. Oh. Which I think is, uh, um, it was like a singing, uh, like karaoke type show, right? And they would like, um, yeah. they would stop the song like halfway through and then someone would have to like, finish the lyrics yeah something like that i can't believe people watch that kind of like a name your t- name that tune type kind of show i don't know it's lame <laughs> that's all i gotta say i mean all right uh yeah we got cw data you want to see what the cw is up to tonight Ooh, what was on the cw all right we kick things off with smallville and it's like 40th season <laughs> probably <laughs> now now that would be supernatural uh supernatural's probably only been on for like 20 years at this point. <laughs> Following Smallville, um, remember this show? I think this was on for two seasons and it only came back because I think um, it, it was like a writer's strike situation. Remember a show called Reaper? Vaguely. Like, I've seen it come up on the streaming services from time to time and I'm like, yeah, no. Uh, I think it's like his this kid turns 21 and then he like finds out that um, like his parents like sold his soul to the devil and now, like, the devil's come back to collect him, but I don't know, like, he's like, all right, you know, I'll let you be a bounty hunter instead. You can, you know, you can work for me. You don't have to go to hell. And he has to, like, I don't know, traverse the earth looking for, um, I guess, people who ran away from hell. I, I, I don't remember the um, premise. 
Okay, yeah, sure. I knew more than you, apparently. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm like, I know the title, but I could tell you nothing about the show. And, uh, it's kind of a shitty night at NBC. You're, uh, well, I don't know. Might be an okay night, depending on uh, depending on your point of view. I think it's a shitty night. Okay, give it to me. What's on NBC this night? Celebrity Apprentice for like two hours. Mm, okay. What's it followed by? Followed by Lipstick Jungle. Okay. Which um, I think was a um, it was based on a, a Candace Bushnell book, who's the author of Sex in the City, and I think they tried to do like yeah Sex in the City for basic tv and i don't think it worked yeah for network tv wasn't brooke shields in it i feel like it had like a big name um brooke shields and i want to say like lucy Liu, like a really freaking random cast no it was um it was the girl from 90210 that played steve's um steve sanders um wife oh um lindsey price yes yes (laughs) okay i wish it was lucy Liu. all right um and then i'm just kind of going through hold on hold on I'm here for Ion TV tonight. I'm here for their uh, for their lineup. <laughs> Ion TV. Okay, okay. This better be something starring Billy Ray Cyrus. It's not. It's not. But from eight to nine, we get a full hour of uh, reruns of Mama's Family. Oh, ooh! I was talking about that last night on my date. Nice. Um, how'd it go? How how'd the talk about it go? It was good. I like that guy I'm dating. Did he recognize Mama's Family? Did he know the uh, show? He's the one who brought it up. Oh, oh, you might have a keeper then. I certainly hope so. Um, is is he gonna? Um, did he tell us to add Mama's Family to the list? <laughs> he didn't. We might have to. We should though. All right, we'll do it, and um, we'll do it like we'll have like Mama's Family March, and we'll just do like all Mama's Family episodes. <laughs> Shout out to um, who is it? Vicky Lawrence. Vicky Lawrence. Um, Ken Barry. Rue McClanahan's in some episodes. And some other people whose names I am blanking on at the moment. Uh, Betty White pops up, I think, in a few. Carol Burnett. There's like, so does Rue McClanahan. Yeah, there's there's a lot of big uh big names in there. And th- this was like, they were on it right before Golden Girls, right? Like a year before it? Yep, right before. And then they left the show. I think the show went to syndication. Yeah, like the show was on a network for a season, and then it moved to syndication, and they went to do Golden Girls. And the rest is history. All right. Uh, yes. Following Mama's Family, it looks like a marathon of something. Like a whole marathon. And this is this is wild to me. Okay. Throw a random sitcom name out there from the 90s. Just just say a name. Caroline in the City. Oh, no. The Drew Carey Show. Oh, man. <laughs> that, okay. It was on all night, I guess. So I on TV was the place to be if you wanted to watch a Drew Carey. Who knew? I love the Who Drew knew? Carey Show. The last few seasons are a little like WTF, but I wish it was streaming. But I think the big reason it's not is a music rights issue. Yeah, I think we talked about that in episode um, last year. I think so, yeah. Because I remember I brought up that this is a show that I really, like, don't recall ever seeing it. Like, I know I've seen it, but I don't remember any episodes. I, like, vaguely remember the premise. For some reason, I thought it took place at a um, radio station, but you told me it takes place at a store. Yeah, it takes place at a department store. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who watched it? I don't know why you thought it was a radio station. Was was there ever an episode where they like go to a radio station? Maybe. Not that I recall. Uh, I don't know. Like In my head, I just like, I know, I just remember being in like maybe like sixth or seventh grade. Or whenever, maybe eighth, I can't remember when the show exactly was on, but I just remember being like... I want to say sixth or seventh grade is kind of when it started. I just remember like, I had never seen it before, but my parents had watched it, and I watched like some of the episode with them, and I remember like chuckling at a few lines, but then like something else came on that I wanted to watch, and I walked away. And I want to say they were like at a radio station. (laughs) Well, I can't, I I just don't know at this point. So if anyone out there has uh, seen the radio station episode of the Drew Carey show... Send us a hot message. Tell us what episode it is, just so I can prove my sanity. <laughs> it's been a very long time since I have watched the Drew Carey show. I just remember Mimi Mania. For, that's all I can remember. I just remember her like everywhere. She oh was, my god, Mimi and her blue eyeshadow. She was always on like the um, covers of like TV guides and stuff like every other week. I'm like, who who is this? Mm-hmm. She, was she like a makeup girl at the makeup counter? Uh, she wanted to be, but because of like her own eye makeup, she was like, no, I don't think so. Was there ever an episode where she was at the makeup counter? Because I feel like I might have seen that one, too. Yeah, because like there was like a strike or something because Kate, a.k.a. Carista Miller, worked at the makeup counter. And there was like a strike or something. So Mimi worked at the makeup counter, like getting her dream come true. 
Oh, they like swap spaces. And she was like, oh, you can't buy this shade of blue. I mix it myself out of like these three blues. Oh, uh, like she made her own like the Mimi blue color. Mm-hmm. Where where has Mimi been? Like the actress, like is she like just disappeared from the zeitgeist? I, I feel like she did a couple things after, but I don't recall seeing her in anything recently. Right. What was her name? I can't even remember. I don't know, Patrick. <laughs> I just don't know. There is a plethora of information in my brain right now, and her name is not one of them. We'll save that for when we do Drew Carey. It's going to be Drew Carey, like, July or something. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably they're on archive.org, I bet. All right. Um, right. I'm going to ask the age all question, and we're going to include the Ion TV lineup in tonight's um rating system. Mm -hmm. On a scale of one out of five Mimi Blue eyeshadows, how many Mimi Blue eyeshadows would you rate? February 28th, 2008, Night of Television. I'm going to give it a 3.5. It's not, like, that great. You're being really generous. There, there's some bangers, but there's just uh. there's just a lot of eh for me. There's not enough variety, in all honesty. I Honestly, I feel like Lost is the only banger. And then we have a couple of good, like, B-sides. Like, Eli Stone's a good B-side. Um, Smallville's all right, but that's more of, like, a deep cut. And the rest is just kind of, like filler for me so i'm gonna give this like this this and then it only gets a two because of lost okay okay i get it i get it yeah so i don't know you're being super generous like maybe you have like a boner for poppy montgomery like i don't know <laughs> it's not this is kind of like a weird period of tv though too because a lot of people like this is right before the streaming boom it is and um this was like peak me buying television on dvd so i was like catching up on a lot of things that i missed yeah like this is right around this like at this point i have every season of lost available on dvd on dvd i have a season uh or two of how i met your mother on dvd and you just kind of like relived the treasured moments of the gang <laughs> oh yeah like i we're not gonna talk about how many times i've seen like the first and second seasons of How I Met Your Mother, because it's a lot. Uh, I feel like we've talked about it before. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to kind of go into like a quick like what's going on in the Lost World at this point? Or do you just want to like dive right into it? Yeah, if you can do this quickly, I would love it because I have a general idea in my memory. I really actually kind of just went in like, this is the episode I'm watching. This is it. Like, this is what I know is this episode <laughs> all right so if somebody is listening to this episode of a very special podcast and you have never once seen an episode of lost not even by accident or you like somehow missed like seven or eight years of television i don't know like you were in a coma and you woke up and it was like 2011 and you just didn't have time you just wanted to like live your life but now it's 2021 and you decided that you want to go back and rediscover all those years you missed mm -hmm. um in 2004, a television series dropped. Um, it was supposed to be some big, like, epic, uh, very, like, long-form storytelling, which was still pretty relatively new to network TV. Like, you see the stuff on, like, HBO stuff, but not really, like, ABC. Okay. We got lost. So it's about these, um, they're called the Castaways. They survive a plane crash that crashes into a mysterious island, which has trees that move. Um, weird clicking noises. Um, polar bears. Polar bears. Just lots of weird shit going on. This is a tropical island, guys. Yeah. And initially there's a cast, like a big luscious cast of like 25 people. And they slowly like trickle down and they bring in some new people. And um, the people are trying to get off the island. And they kind of go, kind of goes back and forth for like three seasons. The show is just kind of, kind of like roaming aimlessly through the. It has a story to tell. They're just trying to tell tell it but they are also at the mercy of the network yeah so they don't know how long they have until a little bit before midway of season three when they make a deal with the network on when to end the show and that is when the episode we have done previously expose comes out and then things start to tighten up the focus is better and it it's going towards the finish line. Yes. The goalpost has been set and we're working our way towards there. Because um, I feel like the first the first season is definitely amazing television. The second season, 
Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of filler episodes. We're starting to hit that point now where like the flashbacks are kind of like repeating themselves in a way. Like I don't really care about Kate anymore. It's like I don't... how many lives did Kate lead before? She's married to Nathan Fillion. Yeah. How many times do we have to see her like running from the um, bounty hunter guy? Exactly. How many times do we have to see like Sawyer like grift a family? Mm-hmm. Like, or like, do we do we care about how Jack got his tattoos? No. <laughs> no. We do not give a damn about Jack's stupid tattoo he got in Thailand from Bai Ling. Yeah, shout out to Bai Ling, um, who used to see like all the time and now just kind of went away. Rightfully, I think. I don't know. She was never really that good. Like, who was she? Like, who was? Like, no. She she can stay away. I just remember her. She was in an episode of Angel, the series. And I think she was like, it was like an interesting, okay episode of Angel. And then she might have been like in a movie or two. And mm-hmm. I don't know, like, I feel like I've, like, I've seen her on like, I don't know, maybe Dan, was she ever on Dance with the Stars? I feel like she might have been. I don't think so. Was she ever on like surreal life or like i know i've seen her in something i i have honestly no clue like i remember like her episode aired and people were like oh it's biling and i'm like who all right why am i supposed to give a damn you want to do a big biling corner oh gosh you ready for it i have no choice all right uh You're doing it no matter what oh she was in wild wild west she's in the crow uh southland tales um entourage Oh, she's in an episode of uh, Homicide Life on the Street. Wow. Was she like a child? I think she's older than you think. She was probably born in the 60s. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, way older than I think. OK, yeah. Like she she's in things like she's done like a Conjuring movie. Um, she's in a lot of these like horror movies that came out in the last couple of years. So like she makes the rounds. I, th- I think she's like one of those. Um. I don't want to compare her to Ileana Douglas because I think Ileana Douglas is a better actress than Bai Ling, but she's kind of like one of the one of those type people that like I feel like you would know the name. I mean, you would know the face more than you would know the name, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, I get that. I don't know who Ileana Douglas is. Like, I probably know the face. You don't know who Ileana Douglas is? No, I probably know the face. I just don't know the name. She was um. There was a show on Fox with Jay Moore called Action many many moons ago. She was like the lead female on that. She was on episodes of Six Feet Under on um, HBO and she kind of like pops up in uh, movies. I think she does like. Oh, yeah. Like I totally I just like Googled her. I recognize her face. She she's been in like some. um, Yeah, she was in Picture Perfect with Jennifer Aniston. She was like, yeah, that. okay. Yeah, she's like. uh, But but I think Ileana Douglas is like, obviously, like, I think a better actress than Bai Ling. But oh, yeah. she just thousand percent has the same quality to me though. Like she just she pops up, but pops up and like she just pops up in random stuff. You don't particularly know her name, except I do for some reason. But you're gonna recognize her face. <laughs> she's she's one of those faces, yeah, a face to watch, like a Steve Zahn. Yeah. You know, she was like a person to watch in like 1996, and yet here we are in 2021, still waiting, still watching, still waiting, still waiting. Just wait. She'll get like. Watch, in like six months, she's going to be like the star of like the most popular series on Netflix for a month. Oh, yeah. It's going to, uh, you know what? I have a feeling that she'll be on, like her and Kim Cattrall will be like in a movie together or in like a big series together. Like, isn't Kim Cattrall working on something for um like Netflix or something like that? I don't know. <laughs> I just know she didn't do the new Sex and the City stuff, which is apparently a series and not a movie. Yeah, it's a, and I'm confused. It's a limited edition series. It's like eight episodes. They decided not to kill off Samantha. She's just going to move to uh, London. And they're they're leaving the option open for her to come back in a proposed season two if she wants to. But I don't think she will. Just Can we just let the series die? Just let it like fade out. Just Here's the thing. There was a point where I loved Sex and the City. I watched it all the time. I rewatched it. And then... Got to a point where I was like, you know what? I'm kind of over it. Uh, yeah, I think it like it had its time in the world. Like it, it shined for a few years. It's like it does not. And I watched like I think the movies ruined it. I think that's both what it did. movies. I think yeah, the the movies definitely ruined it. I just have no interest to even watch whatever HBO Max is putting on. I just think if the they never did the movies and the show, we all just kind of like wondered what whatever happened with their lives. It would have been better off. Mm-hmm. Now, like now we have like some kind of semblance of like what what has transpired and no one agrees with it. So, yeah, it just kind of like ruins watching the whole series like a second time around. 
That's my take. All right. Uh, so back to Lost. Uh, yeah. So yeah, let's talk about. Let's get to the meat and bones. The true star. Uh, I'm sorry. I just I'm really like excited about this. Like I went into this like oh yeah. Like I remember it being a good episode. Then we watched it. Oh, we were both like, like you watch it like forty times like the last week, haven't you? I've only watched it twice. Oh, uh, it just seems like a lot more because I feel like you've just it been just, talking about it too much. I've just been talking about it. <laughs> oh my god! Thank God I went back to work this week because I probably would have watched it more. It would have just been like on replay constantly, and it just like odd replay and driven everybody around me crazy. Like my coworkers should be lucky <laughs> that I did not talk to them about this. Well, because I think, like, the rest of the world has moved on from Lost. Like, Lost is just, like, a thing of the past now. No one, like, has yeah. ever really goes back and re revisits it. Every now and then, like, you hear somebody, like, saying they go back and wanted to rewatch Lost. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, just stay in your own bubble. We we had the um, the balls, so to say, to just watch this one episode. We just So we dived into, like, the middle of the show. Yeah. We're at the point now where they have, like, the end game in sight. And... This is the season where the there's like a mysterious freighter offshore that we keep hearing about, but we don't see it. We yeah, I feel like this episode is really like step two towards the end. I feel like the finale of season three, where we get the first flash forward, is step one. Yes, and um, like we're now at the point because I I feel like season three. Everyone was kind of like talking in riddles through like the whole season because they didn't really like know where the show was going to end. So they just they like presented a mystery, never gave us an answer, presented another mystery. And it just kind of like continued. Mm -hmm. And we're now at a point now like where we're going to like find out what's going on, like what's happening. So you want to take us into the world of the constant kick things off? OK, we have two kind of groups going on in this episode. We have our group on the island who we only get a little bit of in this episode. We have Jack. And thank God. We have um, the redhead whose name I always forget. Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay. And we have one of my absolute favorite lost characters of all time, Daniel Faraday. Yes. The unsung hero of the show, me thinks. Oh, my God. Methinks. Like, I would say, like, I think this is actually the episode where i really like fell in love with him as a character there's just something like he actually had importance and he wasn't just like this weird creepy guy and another you know? thing i liked about this episode we didn't get the characters that i hated like we didn't like by this point <laughs> i was tired of fucking sawyer and kate i was tired of jack we get jack in this episode but it's like very very little like he's not you don't get a lot of jack there's no kate there's no hurley like Looking back, I kind of find Hurley annoying. Uh, I liked him at the time, but yes, looking back, I'm like, nah, I, I get it. I totally get it. And like the one OG character that I really liked, and he's like prominently in this episode, is Saeed. Yes. Oh, there it's there's some good Saeed in this episode. Yes, this is like a Saeed Desmond and Daniel Faraday showcase. Oh my god! Like, oh. this should have been a spinoff. Yeah, there's no Ben. Oh, yeah. We get a whole new group of like creepy people on the freighter. Plus, we get actually, you know what? We can't forget about one of our other favorites, Frank, the pilot. Oh, yeah, Frank. Yeah, shout out to Frank. Oh, my God. Because he has actually like one of my favorite lines of the series. What is it? In a later, in like the next season. We're not going to Guam, are we? Shout out to um Frank. Frank Lapidus, is that his name? Yes, Frank Lapidus. Oh my god, I love this show. I, I love this show. <laughs> I'm such a nerd right now. And we also get actor Fisher Stevens, who you may know from Short Circuit. Yes, there's some good Fisher Stevens in this. And there's even like a Short Circuit joke too, which is kind of like made it. <laughs> there is. Yeah, and yeah, as you said, there's no Benjamin Linus, who I think is like a super suck. Like he just kind of, anytime he's on screen... He's speaking in riddles. Well, to be fair, like, Ben thought he knew stuff, but in reality, Ben knew nothing at all about this island. Like, he had lived on this island for, like, the majority of his life, and he knew nothing. I, I think I just, like, didn't like the actor's delivery. It's just, like, I liked it at first. He was, like, an interesting character. Well, at first, he was, like, this super creepy guy, like, running the other 
others, and then we find out he really doesn't actually have any power. He's just kind of, like, put himself in charge, because he's, like, one of the few, like, original Dharma initiative people left. Kind of assumed the role. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, they were just, like, he, he kind of came in, he was mysterious, and they kind of, like, portrayed him off as, like, a villain, but then he was, like, part of the gang, but, like, sometimes he'd be a villain, and then sometimes he'd be part of the gang again, and it's just like, all right, I, I don't care. Like, we need, like, a real, like, stone-cold villain, and we kind of get it in this episode. We actually get, like, we, yes. a bad guy. We get, like, somebody who's an actual badass. Yes. And you know what? I actually forgot all about this character until he was on screen again. I was like, oh, shit. Yes, we are speaking of the character of Kimi. Who, I, what is he, like a marine guy or something? I don't really know. Yeah, he's like one of those former marine guys who... Green Beret. <laughs> you know, he didn't know what to do when he got out of the service. So now he, like, sells his skills to the highest bidder. And he's going to come to the island and just, like, obliterate everybody. Pretty much. Per yeah, pretty much. Uh, kind of jumping That's ahead. That's his plan. All right, so let's let's go through the, um, the steps of the constant. Kind of see what's uh, happening today. Let's hang out with our pal Desmond. Desmond, okay. Desmond Hume. Desmond, who is this guy who was living in a hatch that Locke and Jack opened, and then he's like, oh my god, there's other people. He's a good guy. He thought he was part of the Dharma Initiative, trying to impress Penny's dad. All right, so the ep the episode opens, and we're, we're on a helicopter. Frank's pilot in the helicopter, and in the helicopter is Saeed and Desmond, and he's staring at a photograph. It's a photograph of him and his um his lady love Penny from the aforementioned not Penny's boat episode. They're they're flying to this mysterious freighter, which we kind of learn has been like circling the island for the last few days. Some of the some of the uh, members of the freighter team have managed to make their way to the island, like the character of Frank and Daniel Faraday and Charlotte, and. I can't remember why they want to go to the freighter. I, I guess to escape, obviously. So they're like heading towards the freighter. Well, yeah, like they are trying, like the Oceanic group want to get off this island. They want to go back to the real world. For the most part, there's a few who want to stay. Like John Locke wants to stay because on this island, the man can still walk. In the real world, he's paralyzed. Yeah, and um, and the freighter crew, they're actually. They're actually not a rescue crew. We kind of, um, I, I don't think it's revealed to the Islanders that they're not part of a rescue crew until after the fact. It's like the next episode when Kimi shows up on the island and starts like killing off all the red shirts. But like, I think even like Frank, the pilot, though, he's like, he was just like hired to fly a helicopter. So he like really doesn't know what's going on. He's like, hey, I'm just the guy. They hired to fly the helicopter. Yeah, like, Frank definitely is just like, I don't know what's up. I'm just here. They paid him a boatload of money. He agreed to it. He's like, great, I don't have to work for the rest of my life, probably, or, like, a long time. I, you have to fly in, like, s a specific direction at, like, a specific time. And they hit the storm, like, that comes out of nowhere. This, like, electrical storm. It's crazy. The, the helicopter's, like, losing control, and it seems like it's going to crash. And then all of a sudden, Desmond wakes up, and he's like, in basic training, like in England or whatever. He's in some kind of like military situation. And he's confused and he's like, oh, sh like how like how did I get here? And he like slowly starts to realize that it, he's like, I guess he, he thinks he's having a flashback maybe or like maybe he died. Like he doesn't like fully understand what's going on. He has no clue what's happening right now because... He he's his brain is so scattered and scrambled because of this situation. He recognizes that all this stuff has happened before because he like he's like all right like mm -hmm. this is a this is like something I've done before like I've been here before I know these people it's 1996 not 2004. Well, here's the thing he at this point he doesn't know he's from 2004. Oh yeah, that's right. He he forgets that he's from the year 2004. He thinks it's 1996 and he's having like some weird dream while he's awake. Like he thinks something like just, he just doesn't know what's going on. He's very confused because he like thought he was dreaming. He was on a helicopter, but he was kind of like frozen and didn't get out of bed soon enough for like 
the basic training like the warm up or whatever sergeant or whatever yeah so he, he's like getting yelled at by the sergeant and then they all like the whole crew have to go out and do like push-ups in the rain and they're all everyone's pissed at off everyone's pissed off at desmond and he's like still confused and then like as soon as like he starts to like sort of fig- figure out like what might be happening he'll like wake up and all of a sudden he's like on the helicopter and he's like, how did I get here? And he's even more confused at this point. He's like, what the F? Because he does not recognize anyone at this point. He doesn't recognize Frank. He doesn't recognize Saeed. And then there's all these other people around. And they're all sketchy as fuck. Yeah, so... They're, like, so sketchy. When he when he portals back to the helicopter, though, the helicopter has seemingly escaped the, the electrical storm. It's, like, now in the clear. There's, like, no sign of clouds mm-hmm. anywhere. Everyone... Frank and um, Saeed are like confused and they try to talk to Desmond and he's like, how do you know my name? And they kind of suspect something's up. And that's when they like land on the freighter because they find the freighter and like all these guys with like guns come out and they're kind of like circling the the three as they get off the helicopter and trying to talk to the guys on the freighter. But um, Kimi kind of like knows what's up because Saeed says there's something wrong with his friend. Like he was like seemingly normal a few minutes ago. But now he's like acting like he has amnesia. And Kimi's like, oh, like you need to see our um, our onboard doc. And they won't let Saeed go with them. They don't want Saeed to go with them. Yeah. And they they try to separate Frank and Saeed too, I think, don't they? They're trying to like split them up. Kind of, yes. Um. So like they're going to, because I, I guess, I, I don't know exactly like how much Kimi knows about like who's on the island. Like, do they, do they know that the plane crashed there? Like, I don't think they do. I think they're just looking for like, um, the whole Jacob stuff, right? No, I, I think they do. They're aware because at this point they're aware because Charlie has communicated. That is true. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, because that's how Charlie went to the Looking Glass station. He got in contact with the freighter. Yeah, so like the freighter knows that there are survivors of Oceanic Eight Fifteen on this island. They do not know maybe exactly who survived they probably have like dossiers on every freaking member like person who was lost on that flight that is true and they're probably playing it safe too because um you know there's something they want on the island so Mm -hmm. let's just play it safe let's just not be too like forward of what we're what we're after so they he kind of plays coy with saeed but saeed you know like they picked the badass to go. Like, I, I feel like if somebody else went, like if they sent like a uh, fucking Hurley or something, they would have just thrown him overboard. A good little trio. So they kind of like split everybody up. They take Desmond to like the sick bay. And that's where Desmond realizes that there's another guy in the sick bay. And it's Fisher Stevens. And he appears to be going through the same thing that Desmond is going through. Like he's like hopping through time. But I guess it's like happening like. It's been happening for a few days for for um, Fisher Stevens. So like he's yeah, he's been going through it for a few days. He or I really think it was Kimi destroyed the communication equipment. Um, he's but he's hopping through time. He doesn't know what's going on, and he is getting towards the end of his ability to do this. Yes, because um. There is a point where, like, the doctor comes in and he sedates Fisher Stevens. Like, he gives him some sort of sedative to, like, calm him down, but it doesn't appear to be working anymore. It's Like, it seems like it might have been working at first to, like, help him relax, but now it has, like, no effect. I guess, this like, he's, like, the second or third person this has happened to because they talk about how, like, somebody else died, like, within days of this occurring. So Desmond's not really, like, grasping the, like, the idea of what's going on. But he's confused because he finds that he has a picture of himself and Penny in his pocket, like in his place. And so the next time that he like hops back to 1996 England, he's like, you know what? I'm going to call up Penny. So he like f- runs to like a payphone, like in the rain, um, probably like escaping his um, basic training duties. And he like calls up Penny, who's like pissed at him because like he just like randomly just decides to like leave her one day and joins the fucking service like out of the blue yeah but let's be real this is totally like something her father charles widmore made happen and penny doesn't know at this point that is true yes that is true um but but desmond like wants to explain himself 
but he like really can't because Penny's just is like just being very blunt with him and she like hangs up the phone. She's like, Don't call me. Like this is it. Like Merry Christmas. <laughs> and he's like, Okay. And he like tr- like he was like gonna go to call her back, and that's when he like hops back to um back to the boat. We're kind of like learning a little more of like what's going on. So like Saeed's like really concerned about where Desmond is. So he like somehow like in his travels on the boat, like bumps into Frank. Frank happens to know where like the sick bay is. So they kind of like break into the sick bay. Frank has like a weird little like satellite phone that can communicate with Daniel Faraday, who's like back on the island. Frank gets a hold of Faraday. Like, cause well at the island, like Jack and Juliet, um, are with Charlotte and Faraday. They're just like going in circles. Cause like Jack's like, why haven't we heard from them? And Charlotte is definitely a cagey little bitch. Cause like, let's be honest. Faraday would tell them all what he could if Charlotte wasn't there. Uh, I think he's, doesn't he start to tell? And then like Charlotte interrupts. Yeah. he like tries, he's like trying to explain like that time on the island is very different than time to the rest of the world. Because I think they say, I think Jack says, like, they've been gone for a few hours now. And he's like, well, that doesn't mean anything because, you know, time's different. <laughs> they've really only been gone like 20 minutes. But they're like, should it only take maybe like 20, 40 minutes at most to get to your freighter? This this is what I, was my example of like Lost talking in riddles. Like they kind of do this thing where like Daniel Faraday starts to explain and then Charlotte will like stop him or they'll go to like a commercial like, it was just this, like, annoying way of, like, writing a show, but started to get better at it, like, around this time, but they, they still got included in here and there. So, they end up hearing from Saeed, and he's like, all right, you're like, we're okay, but um, there's something wrong with Desmond. Like, he's he's Desmond, but he's not Desmond. Like, he doesn't remember, like, how he got here. And, like, Faraday, like, runs over to his notebook, and he's, like, going through papers and pages, and he's, like, there's all these, like, weird little drawings of, like, arrows and boxes and things yeah. and he's like put him on the phone and he gets on the phone and i think like isn't like kimi like banging on the door so they only have like a few seconds to talk <laughs> yeah like kimi's freaking out like they get to a point where like they're talking and um faraday is like listen i need you next time you like go back to 1990 like you go to this other place i need you to get on a train go to oxford university Find me, Daniel Faraday. You're going to tell me these numbers. And if I don't believe you at that point, you're going to tell me you know about Eloise. And I will help you in the past. That's when, um, so Desmond, like, jumps back to the boat at that point, like, before he has a time to, like, clarify, like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like, that's all he knows. And Kimi comes in, he smashes the satellite phone. So, like, now they can't even call the island anymore. So it's, like, useless. He basically locks everyone in there. And this is where, like, uh, where Fisher Stevens like reveals that, like, you know, there used to be a way that you could um, call the mainland, but you can't anymore because all the communication um, has been destroyed. So, like, you know, we can't call back shore. Um, so Desmond hops back. He goes to he goes to Oxford. He shows up. Faraday is like teaching there or something or he's like a grad student. Yeah, he's definitely like teaching. Oh, he's got long hair. Desmond tells Faraday, like, you know, I need you to do this for me. Like, he's like, I know about your project. He really doesn't. He's just kind of like making things up. Yeah, he, ha- he just has enough information to get Faraday to help him. So I guess Faraday, like, he's been working on a secret project, but like Oxford has been trying to like shut him down for like weeks. And actually, they I think they did shut him down, but he's been like secretly working on it. And that that that's what the I know about Eloise comes into play. So that like kind of catches him off guard. And he's like, all right. He, like, kind of looks around to make sure no one's, like, staring at him. And he, like, takes him inside this, like, secret room that he has, like, behind his um classroom or something. Just, like, a dusty old room. Uh, there, there's, like, um there's that, like, tarp over a table. And he, like, pulls it off. And there's this, like, giant, like, rat maze in there. And then on, like, the, um, on, like, the chalkboard, there's this, like, crazy, like, Matt Damon, Goodwill Hunting style, like, calculation on the board. Desmond gives Faraday the numbers that feature Faraday tells him and he like starts doing some math on the chalkboard and he's like oh my god he's like this might work and he's like what might work and he's like you'll see so he like takes out this like giant like photon beam thing he like blasts it at the mouse who happens to be Eloise it's like a little like cute little like white mouse 
Yeah. Um, he's like, I'll, I'll know you're right if, if Eloise does what I think Eloise is going to do. And she, like, runs through the maze and gets to the end of it, like, in the first try without, like, running to any any um, dead ends. And he's like, well, Faraday's, like, all excited that happened. And Desmond's like, I don't get it. He's like, what does that have to do with anything? And he's like, well, I haven't taught Eloise how to run the maze yet. So, you know, you are right. You are from the future. So, voila. Desmond kind of, um, actually, so before, before the satellite phone smashed on the island or on the boat, Desmond and Faraday on the island were like talking and Faraday's like, listen, he's like very dangerous for you to like jump between the two. He's like, your brains are basically short circuiting. Ha ha ha. Get it? <laughs> don't worry. We get that. And don't worry. Fisher Stevens is no longer in dark makeup. He's like. You, it's very unstable for you to like hop between two time frames. Like you're, you're like right now. It seems like you'll be okay, but it's really gonna start fucking with your head, and your brain's basically gonna fry at some point. It's gonna explode. He's like, H- unless you find like you need a constant between two locations. You need to have like someone on like two sides who is like understanding what's going on. And he's like, that has to be Penny. He's like, I need to talk to Penny in the past, kind of explain to her what's going on and then talk to her again in the future somehow. So that way, like, it's it's going to connect me to the two. It's going to tether me, basically, like, stop this from occurring. I, I don't know how it works, but it works. But it, it apparently does. So we're going to go with it. So Desmond kind of is, is like on this like wild adventure. So he like when he goes back to England in 1996, he like tries to call Penny, but like her number has changed. Has she moved? So he like goes and tracks down her father. Who hates him. Who is played by one of our favorites. Alan Dale, character actor Alan Dale, a.k.a. Caleb Nickel from The O.C. Isn't he Bart Bass on Gossip Girl 2? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> uh, I, I want to say yes. I don't see his name on Gossip Girl, though. Let me find. There's his Wikipedia page. He is on the um. He is on the new dynasty, though. Uh, I maybe I'm getting him confused with somebody else. I I want to say, um, man, he do, he works a lot though, man. Yeah, he gets around. Uh, he, his his filmography just goes on forever. He works more than Ileana Douglas and Bai Ling. Okay, he just looks like the guy who played Bart Bass. Then who the heck played Bart Bass? That's that is a great name though. <laughs> uh, Bart Bass is played by Robert John Burke. No, okay, my brain just, like, obviously short-circuited. Robert John Burke from Robocop 3. Finner. You may know him from, uh, Tombstone. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. And, uh, a little thing called, uh, Army Wives. So, not, not the person you were thinking of, right? I I might be. (laughs) Who knows? Who knows? And here we are. Doing a podcast, 250 episodes deep, talking about fucking character actor Robert John Burke, who played Bart Bass <laughs> on <Okay>. Gossip Girl. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Uh, oh my god. Um, Desmond needs to find that person that he's going to know in 1996, but he's also going to be able to contact in 2004. And so he's like, Penny, because I-, I can talk to Penny. So he goes to Charles Whitmore, who's at this like, auction buying a picture of the ship that crashed onto the island the slave ship the black rock i think it was called yeah the black rock um yeah so he's like he's bidding on it and then he like bumps into um bumps into desmond in like the men's room room. (laughs) and they have this like (laughs) he's like oh yeah you want penny's address okay like whitmore gave that up way too easily well, I think he I think he originally asked her for her phone number, but he didn't know it because it's 1996. And like you just like, yeah, it's probably written down in like a Rolodex that he has back at his office. Let's be real. Like he just doesn't walk around with his daughter's phone number because why would you? Let's be real. Like, why would Charles Woodmore actually call his daughter? I, I feel like he might call her here and there, but it's like it's the numbers written down like in his Rolodex or in his like little black book. Yeah. Like, okay, and he doesn't dial that. His secretary dials. Yeah, he's like, Susan, can you call up Penny? I mean, this is a man who doesn't talk to his son. He doesn't he doesn't know the um the phone number, but he just happens to know the address. Like well, you know what? Maybe he like he was just there like recently and like it was like fresh in his head. Yeah, 
like maybe he just had like flowers sent because it's like a new apartment or something. Oh, like a yeah, like a home, like a housewarming gift. Uh, yeah. Penny just had a housewarming party with her gal pals, and for some reason she invited her dad. Like maybe like as a joke. Oh, you don't invite Charles Woodmore. Charles Woodmore just shows up. Uh, I just picture it's like the first episode of like old school Dynasty where um, what's your name? Crystal's having like the bachelor party with her gal pals. And all of a sudden, like the limo shows up, oh, like you see it like god. outside the, the window. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so oh God. Just thinking about that. It's so embarrassing. Uh, I just picture Penny and her gal pals. They're watching like, um, I don't know, like, what was Doctor Who, it was like the season premiere of like Doctor Who and I, whatever is big in Britain in 1996. Like the second Keeping Up Appearance, I mean the second um, Are You Being Served show, who knows? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Are You Being Served again? So they're watching that. It's like the first night in the apartment and they look out the window and they see like the fucking Widmore Cadillac pull up, mm -hmm. Lincoln Town Car, whatever it was. He gets out and the driver like, actually the driver steps out, opens up the back door Widmore steps out and he's like looking at looking at the house and he's not expecting there to be like all her gal pals over and then he's like kind of like thrown by it so he's like oh here you go like here's here's your Cuisinart um blender that I got you and he like leaves I'll come back tomorrow she's like thank you daddy <laughs> I have to go to an auction now and buy a painting of a slave ship that just disappeared oh, well you have fun with that daddy and then like meanwhile she closes the door and then she's like oh we can have margaritas and like they blend up um margaritas and watch the rest of you being served again <laughs> And that, that's that's how um, Widmore happens to have Penny's address. So he hands it to Desmond and Desmond shows up. And is it Christmas Eve in 1996 or is that just is it? No, uh, not in 1996. OK, um, but he shows up and he and Saeed have at this point figured out this is like Desmond. The last time he was on the freighter in his mind, they found out it was 2004. It was Christmas Eve. Saeed's like, I didn't realize we were this close to Christmas, you know, because they weren't thinking about it. This part kind of like annoyed me because it just cuts to like, you know, like an actual like hang on the wall calendar. And it's like all the days are crossed off. So like, what if they got the day? Like, what if someone didn't like X off the days for a while? Yeah. And it wasn't really Christmas Eve. So I was like, this is a big like, I mean, yeah, what if kind of thing. But it is. But um, they go with it. They decide that it's Christmas Eve. 2004. Well, I think um, Saeed asked something like to Frank, and Frank's like, "Yeah, no, that's right." I, I think, like, I think that's what happens. Um, I wish it just cut over to like a Windows computer. <laughs> it was like this, like the time and date screensaver was on. <laughs> so when Desmond um, jumps back to 1996, he tells Penny, "He's like, Penny, I need your phone number. I'm going to call you on Christmas Eve." 2004 and he's like you're not gonna see me or hear from me for a while after this because i think at this point in time this is like where he goes to the island to um because yeah he's gonna go to the island soon um i'm pretty sure like, like he's gearing up to go yeah like i think in 2004 it's established that he's been there for a little while right yeah he's been there for a few years yeah so and penny's like what he's like just please penny whatever you do don't change your number i'm going to call you on this night, and I need you to answer the phone. Like, she gives him the number, and he doesn't write it down. He's just repeating it to himself. Well, he can't. <laughs> and then he, like, flat. he jumps back to 2004. Because I think she asks him. Like, she's like, I aren't you going to write it down? Like, if you're going to call me in, you know, eight years? And he's like, yeah. I can't. Like, he's like, if I write it in my hand, it's going to go away. And she's like, that's fucking weird. No, it doesn't, because he still had the numbers on his hand that Faraday gave him. Well, he wrote that in the future, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like because he talked to him on the phone, on the satellite phone. So he wrote his he wrote the numbers down on his hand in the future. So like he remembered them when he hopped back the next time because he got to be able to see it a minute later. Yeah. So um. Oh, uh, but hold on. This, I, I I have to talk about this part though before before we go forward. So uh -huh. all right, you're you're Penny, your ex boyfriend. Like you haven't seen in like I don't know. I I'm guessing like a couple of weeks, maybe months. You had this like weird breakup with like he just kind of like disappeared suddenly, like in the night, just like went away. You didn't hear from him for like weeks. All of a sudden, he like called you up hysterically one night and you move and you change the number. And then he like shows up again and he's like talking nonsense. And then he leaves. <laughs> Are you just going to be like, all right, well, you know, um, 
I'm going to put that on my calendar right now, you know, December 24th, 2004. <laughs> yeah, here, let me add this to my planner that I don't ever have. There is there is a point, though, where, like, she looks out at the window as he's walking away. Like, kind of like, like, should I call fucking the police? Like, what what do I do? Like, should I call a doctor? Like, what do I do here? Okay, I'm going to tell you. If my ex-boyfriend Aaron called me up and was, like, freaking out like this, I'd be like, okay, what? Do you expect me to do like now you can go away if my ex-fiance john called i'd be like hey well what you need to do is get away from your narcissistic toxic mother and you'll be okay <laughs> love it I- i'm guessing she probably went through a period where she was like doubting this was happening like whatever he's just crazy she like never heard from him again but then like maybe she just decided to like maybe it was like a year or two later or whenever Desmond went to the island. She's like, maybe I should just check on him just to see like how he's doing. Just because that whole last time I saw him just didn't sit well with me. And then like she realized there's like no trace of him anywhere. Like he's he's missing. Like he's because I think we kind of we kind of learn that Penny has basically been like looking for him for like all these years. Yeah, Like there's a point where Desmond does just kind of like vanish and she doesn't know what's going on. I do believe she suspects her father is involved somehow. And a part of her like re- is like harping back to this night where he just like showed up in 1996 and was acting all hysterical. Mm-hmm. Like maybe there was like a time like maybe like I bet you like the next day she was like going to go and change her phone number. But she got lazy and like now she's like, well, now I can't change the phone number because he might actually call me. And like a part of her like maybe believes it. Maybe she doesn't believe it. But we we know that she gets in contact with the island because she she reaches charlie she talked to charlie so at least there was that now she like she doesn't know like how weird the island is so she's now like you know what maybe i should stay home on christmas eve (laughs) yeah she's like oh i'm definitely staying home christmas eve we kind of cut back to um the freighter like this one last time and because the satellite has been the satellite link between the freighter and the mainland's been like severed Luckily, um, Saeed used to be like a communications major, like in his like army days. So he like kind of knows how to fix it. Um, Fisher Stevens like directs the the group to this room. But he then he like as soon as they get there, he dies because he's yeah, he he short circuits. He doesn't have a constant. (laughs) He couldn't find Johnny five. (laughs) Um, And so like I think doesn't Desmond have like a nosebleed here, which is like the telltale sign that you're going to die soon. Yeah. Desmond starts to have a nosebleed. Saeed doesn't realize the um, levity, like how serious this is. Um, so he's like trying to, um, he's trying to basically the um, phone line back together. And he's like, this is like pointless because like you don't even know the phone number. And all of a sudden he just like rattles off a phone number. And he's like, whoa, that was weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to go. With Saeed's like, this is not the weirdest stuff I've seen in the last like four months. So you know. Said, Said just dials the numbers like he knows the international code and everything calls up the phone's ringing. It rings like a good like 10 times. Too. Well, you know, Patty is probably like on the other side of the house. Like, oh, crap. The, the landline's ringing. That's the number I gave him. Yeah, she's pooping. She's like on the toilet. <laughs> she doesn't have a cordless. She's got like an actual like corded phone. She's like running across the house. Maybe she like trips over a cat. Oh, God. But this is where it gets Christmassy. Petty and Desmond have this amazing, beautiful reunion on the phone. So Penny answers the phone and she's like, hello. And he's like, Petty. And she's like, Desmond, it is you. Oh, my goodness. She's like, and um, I guess now we learn like immediately that the, the phone's battery is going to die. Like in like 15 seconds. It, it's some battery that's pretty much already corroded. It, Saeed can't tell you how ch- much charge is in this. But it's enough to get us, like, a good 60 seconds on the phone. Yeah, so they kind of, like, profess that they miss each other. And Penny, like, reveals, like, she's like, I know about the island. I know where you are. I'm going to find you. I talked to your friend Charlie. I hope he's okay. And, like, all this stuff. There's just kind of, like, a moment of happiness in Desmond's eyes. He's like, Mm -hmm. I've been through hell and hell and back again, like, numerous times. He's, like, on this boat in the middle of the Pacific somewhere. Like, he knows, like, there's a world out there now, like, because he was led to believe that, like, the whole world was dead or dying or something. Like, the world would blow up if he, like, didn't um, enter in these, like, 
coordinates onto the um Dumber Initiative computer. So it's just all like a mind blow for him. Um, he's he's fixed the whole like constant thing where like he's not jumping through hoops anymore. He's like now permanently in 2004. He remembers everything. He's really like Penny's still out there thinking about him. It's Christmas somewhere. It's Christmas and things are beautiful. It's snowing in England. I think she lives in England. I don't know where she lives. She has a British accent. Penny has reconnected with Desmond. Uh, she's like, I talked to Charlie. Like, there's that moment where it's like, okay, Charlie did get through to her. That's like a confirmation that Desmond and Saeed will need to under to really understand what they are in. We get this beautiful reunion between the two. And then we get like the... It's lost, so you gotta have like a crazy fucking thing that happens at the end. So it cuts over to the beach. Kind of like he's like with the group of like Jack, Juliet, and Charlotte, and they all kind of like go off ahead of him. And he like stops and he like sits at the tree for a minute to gather his thoughts. And he pulls out his notebook and it settles on a page. What does the page say, Cat Halsey, the author? What does the page say that he settles on? If anything should happen, Desmond Hume will be my constant. Whoa! I, I just. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it so much. I love this so much. Does anything involving Daniel Faraday... Oh, he does jump through time for a while, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Like the, Okay. All right, so it makes sense. It tracks. It tracks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what an episode. What a wild, wild fucking episode. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. Like, it just was fun to watch. Like, an experience again. Like, oh, it just... Oh, so good. They don't make network TV like this anymore. They don't let network TV make this kind of stuff. I'm surprised they got, like, they got so much into, like, a 45-minute time slot. Oh, it was just so, oh. This episode just so good. Is it safe to say? Is it safe to, I think you already teased it um, online. Is it safe to say this is going to be a rare Cat 5? I did tease it on Twitter, but, you know, they never know what we're recording when, so. So on a scale of one out of five um, corroded battery acid satellite phones, this is getting a, a five? This 100% gets five. This is like one of the greatest hours of television. It really is. I, I, I think like ever since February 28th, 2008, it's only been like 4.5s here and out. For some reason, Lost got canceled after this episode. I'd be okay. I'd be happy with it. I mean, like, at this point, there is no more question about Desmond being important to the series. Because before... All right, so... Like, what was he doing half the time? He really wasn't in it that much, like, up to this point. He only, like, he's in the first two episodes yeah. of the second season um, when they were kind of, like, involved in the hatch. And then he just, like, takes off. Like, he's like, fuck this, I'm out of here. You, you can deal with this now. Mm -hmm. And then you don't see him till like, the end of the season, the end of the second season. He's kind of, like, peppered in the third season. Um, but it's like, it's like, this is the first real part of the show, like, where you know that he, like, he's cemented in the show now. He's actually important to the story we're, tell we're being told. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on a ledge. I'm gonna say he's probably, like, the best character on the show. And he's kind of, like, Undersold. I'm a Jack fan. I'm sorry. Ugh, Jack is so lame, though. Like, he was good in the beginning, like, when he was, like, the leader, but he just, his, like, leadership skills kind of, like, fell apart. I mean, he, he has his, he definitely has his, like, um, redemption arc at the end. But. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, this man crashes on an island trying to bring his dead father back to America, doesn't know that his pregnant sister is the pregnant girl he's helping. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. He has this bond with her and her kid, but doesn't know that's his sister until, like, what, he comes back to the goddamn island? Yeah, it's, like, way later, right? Like, the very end of the series when he finds out? Yeah, like, way later. Like, I think maybe they figure it out after Kate is raising Aaron for a while. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Let, let's do a top five greatest hours of television. Where, where would you put the constant in it? And we'll build our list around that. I want to put it at number one. Just slightly worse than the constant. What is the next greatest hour of television? The um, final hour of Cheers. So you're saying the last hour of Cheers is not as good as the constant? Because mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I mean, 
There is there a great two pot or a Seinfeld that might be better than the constant? What else? Um, maybe the pilot episode. What, not the pilot, like the one where they're, they're shooting the pilot and it's like a two parter. Is it that one? That that is a two parter. Um, there's not like a like a hot um how I met your mother. That's like a good two parter. Oh, you know what? Okay, we know that I love me somehow. I met your mother. Like I actually love like the finale. It's not a full hour. But the episode, it's not the final season, it's the season before the final, where Ted is, um, he has a ticket to robots versus wrestlers, and he's all alone, and he says he's, like, his friends are all ditching him, because they're all, like, Lily and Marshall are with their baby, and Barney and Robin are planning their wedding, and he's single, and he, like, has this realization that he's, like, when he's telling the story, that he's 45 days away from meeting Tracy. And he, like, he's like, if I could have, I would have rushed to her apartment, knocked on her door, and, like, said, I want these 45 days with you. Like, that is just such a great... Ugh. But not as good as the constant episode of Lost. No, it's not. <laughs> what about Who Shot Mr. Burns? Part one and two. No. Um, you know, Luke and Laura's wedding, General Hospital. That usurps? That's, that's better than the constant? No, but it's in the top five. What about, like, is there, like, a hot episode of, like, mm-hmm. I Love Lucy? <laughs> That would that would compare to the constant. I don't think so. Boy Meets World. Nope. Sabrina the Teenage Witch goes to Animal Kingdom. God no. Oh, I had to throw that out there. I wanted to trick you. You know better than that. <laughs> you know better than that, Patrick M. What about, Dunn. I don't know an episode of Bosom Buddies, maybe. No. Will you just knock it off? You know the constant is number one. I don't know. I just wanted to test test your knowledge. Like if any, if there are any other episodes. They would be from Lost. It would be like Through the Looking Glass. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this out there. Um, I like Through the Looking Glass, but the constant's way better. Sorry. Sorry, whoever shits on the constant. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So us saying the constant is a Christmas episode, like people saying Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Is, so, is that a good tracking? I mean, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I actually just got a text asking me if the best Christmas movie, including Die Hard. But you know what's also a Christmas movie? Shazam. That is true. Shazam is a Christmas movie. Is it on our list? No, it's no, not. No, it's not. Because what is on our list? Because what are we doing next week? What classic? Um, I think we're going to a movie, right? Um, We are doing a holiday special. Oh, a special. That's right. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. We're, we have a movie coming up though, right? Yes, I believe we do. Are we doing the Family Circus Christmas special? No. Uh, trying to get that out there. That, that's We're doing a Rankin-Bass classic. No, we are not doing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger. And we are not doing Frosty the Snowman. We are not also doing one of my personal favorites, Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey. Then what could we possibly be doing? What's left? Tell us. Tell us what's left in this illustrious list of Rankin-Bass Christmas specials. Okay, first of all, there's still a lot of <laughs> Rankin-Bass stuff left. <laughs> um, but we are doing one of the most popular Rankin-Bass specials, The Year Without a Santa Claus. Yes, it involves, what, the Heat Misers? The Heat Miser and the Ice Miser and Jingle and Jangle. And, oh, it's going to be so good. Uh, did you ever see, like, the live action one with, like, a- actual actors? That was like a TV movie. I have actually not seen that. I know of it, but I haven't gotten to see it. Oh my god, it is fucking wild. <laughs> like if you think the year without a Santa Claus in like claymation form is wild, wait till you see like the live action one. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna set this straight right now. Rankin Bass is not claymation. Well, you know what I meant. They are stop motion puppets. You know what I meant. <laughs> I know what you mean, but I want the record straight. They are stop motion puppets. They are not clay. They're not Gumby and friends. <laughs> no, they're not Gumby. They're not the California raisins or any of that kind of mess. The little like after these messages will be right back um, segments. Yeah. Okay. They are stop motion. They are like robot chicken. Yes. Which I don't know if is stop motion. I'm pretty sure it is, right? Oh, Patrick. So join us next week when we watch the Rankin Bass stop motion classic, not claymation, not claymation, not to be confused with the California reasons. The year without a Santa Claus. Hopefully it holds up. I haven't seen it since like 1989. So who knows? I haven't seen it since Taylor Swift was blessed onto this universe. <laughs> All right. So I was talking to an ex-boyfriend today and he's like, I haven't listened to Taylor Swift since we went to that concert. Oh, I was like, oh. Didn't even listen to uh, Red Taylor's version or the last one that came out, Taylor's version? Nope. 
Bad news. Bad news. All right. Uh, where can you follow our Wildest Adventures cat? Also, the author. Where can you follow us? You can follow us on Twitter at Very Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr at A Very Special Podcast. Do not accept imitations. You can find us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Amazon Podcast, Google Podcast, YouTube, pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. So subscribe rate leave us a comment leave us your essays on youtube and all that good stuff and as always girl as always bye watch the skies for the impeccable frank lapidus lying around on his whirly bird <laughs>